Instead of remaining as mere promises like what critics would have it so, the investment pledges the president secured during his first trip to the land of the rising sun have become actual investments. What's even better, the chief executive in his visit anew to Japan has again reeled in more of these pledges and has even been updated on the previous ones that have so far generated more means to eke out a living for many Filipinos. Kenneth Pashente has the full report. The investment promises the country obtained during the first visit of President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. in Japan in February have come into fruition. The chief executive shared the business commitment signs then do not only remain as pledges. From the 757 billion pesos in investment pledges, 169.7 billion pesos have been funneled to the country, which resulted in the creation of almost 10,000 jobs. The president also secured new investment after a series of meetings on the sidelines of the recently concluded ASEAN Japan Commemorative Summit. Nine new letters of intent and MOUs were signed during this visit, valued at 14.5 billion pesos in investments and over 15,750 additional jobs for our workers. In total, the Philippines have gotten over 770 billion pesos worth of investment pledges from Japanese investors. This significant investment is anticipated to create around 40,200 jobs marking a positive and promising development for our collaborative efforts. But besides the economic matter, President Marcos Jr. also pushed the environmental issue that resulted in an agreement between the Department of Environment and Natural Resources or DNR and the Ministry of the Environment of Japan that will push for environmental protection. The Memorandum of Cooperation was also signed with the Coast Guards of the two countries, which will further strengthen the relations between Japan and the Philippines. In his attendance in the Asia Zero Emission Community or ASEC Leaders Meeting, the Chief Executive also pointed out the country's initiative to push for clean energy transition. I highlighted our experience in promoting clean energy projects such as the first wind farms in Southeast Asia in 2003 during my term as governor of Ilocos Norte. And I invited ASEC partners, including Japan, to invest in the Philippine renewable energy industry to achieve not only the intention of the ASEC, but also the overall goal of the Paris Agreement. The President's participation in the commemorative summit for the 50th anniversary of ASEAN and Japan cooperation was also productive. There, he underscored the importance of the peace, security, and stability in the region. The ASEAN leaders have also agreed on the existence of a rules-based Indo-Pacific region anchored in the UN Charter and Treaty of Amity and cooperation in Southeast Asia. We highlighted the need to promote respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, settlement of differences or disputes by peaceful means, and renunciation of the threat or use of force. The chief executive disclosed the summit served as a way to emphasize Japan's aim to promote friendship with ASEAN, including the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange for Students and Youth or Genesis program, which the country has supported since 2007. It also became a platform to discuss the role of Japan in the economy of the Philippines and of the ASEAN countries to promote peace and security, trade and investment, climate action, energy security, and others. My administration will see to it that our constructive engagements with ASEAN, our external partners, our stakeholders, will continue to best serve our national interest in as much as we promote the regional interest of peace and prosperity for the well-being of our people. Without a doubt, this summit reaffirmed the robust and enduring character of ASEAN-Japan relations. Kenneth Pashente for the nation.